As you might hear from the background noise, this will be a quite different episode than the regular episodes. I'm standing on the Oslo airport Gardermoen uh, and waiting for my plane to Manchester and then I'm boarding a train to Blackpool as I will attend the Blackpool convention this year as well. And I thought I would wanted to report from the convention but rather than just report afterwards I chose to try to report as I go this time to better give a feeling on how the convention is. Let's see how that works. So follow me as I board the plane and go to Blackpool. We are now ready for priority boarding and invite our Euro Bonus Diamond Gold and Star Alliance Gold members to board first. Boarding completed. I have just arrived at the hotel here in Blackpool. I have checked in and I'm in my room. And now starts one of the favorite parts of the convention for me. I'll go down to the bar and see if I can catch up with some friends. I suspect at least Shorty will be there. He's usually there at least one day early like I am. Because the official program won't start before tomorrow. But I'll now go to the elevator and see who I can find. Thursday evening and I was right, Shorty was there and so was Bob and Pete and many others and had a great chat with them and uh, for me this is just as important as all the official events. So now I will go to bed and be happy and uh, look forward to the breakfast tomorrow where I will meet even more friends because I stay here at the Grand where the official event is. It's Friday morning and I have just had breakfast and had a great time catching up with even more people that has shown up now. Now I plan to go down and see if Jim and Nigel is busy rigging up for tonight's feature. They are running the projectors tonight and uh, I'll see if I can do a catch up with them. Well, I'm standing here with Nigel and Jim who are running the film shows on Friday and on Saturday. Um, are you ready for this uh, today? Well, yeah, I think so. We've done a little test this morning. We spent this morning checking it all through. And uh, yes, we should be okay for tonight. Good. And uh, what are we going to see tonight? Well, I'm running the, the classic feature of um, um, A Night to Remember, which is all about the Titanic, if you've, if you've seen this before. And this has been well run before on televisions, I think, many times, but that's a good film. And uh, it's on 60mm this It's on 16mm, yes. Yes, three reels. How, how many years have you done this now? Oh, I've been doing it for a long, long time now. I presented films one time for the East Anglian Film Archive in a, in a volunteering basis. Um, so we did lots of shows locally. So, yeah, I've... I've been doing it for a long, long time now. Um, I did it for them for 20 years. So I reckon I probably had at least two shows a month. And Nigel, he's uh, been doing it probably a lot longer than me. He was a projectionist mm. at, uh, in a big cinema at one time. So well, tw 20 years ago, <coughs> and I was just thinking when you were talking about that, 20 years ago, I was down at the Duxford Warmer Mu Museum there the airfield and uh, we used to, for five years I used to go down at the weekends and run uh, 35 mil features war films in the Astra cinema which they rebuilt and uh, we helped them do that and we used to do that yeah. uh, that was 20 years ago and then uh, I finished in 2007 uh, as a projectionist professional projectionist in the cinema for 10 years uh, in Ipswich and so I enjoyed that, you know. So I've done a bit of everything, really. 
And then another thing we did, for, and I can't remember how many years we did it now. I was talking to David Cleveland now, which people probably know David Cleveland. He um, was the mad professor in Vision On years ago. You know, well, he lives about three miles away from me. And we got together and he said, why don't we do a little show of old films back in the 1900s, so silent films with a hand crank 35 mil. And this is what we did. And we went all over the place with it. And I used to play the piano to the music for it and, uh, and then operate the projector and he used to do the talking and I used to do the talking and we did all these shows and that was really good. But it got to the stage where there was a lot of gear to take, stands and things, they're heavy. Those old machines were very heavy. The chronos, they were going on chronos and they were very heavy. And uh, in the end we said, well, we can't do it anymore. It's too much, you know, to carry. But we went to Bradford, you know, and we went down to Bristol there was, I had a, a, a festival there a sort of movies uh, for a week, and there was all been there. And I remember we, we had a full house when we did it. And I, get, I had a nice new piano to play on, and um, Eric Sykes was there as well. Yeah, of course, he's gone now, but I mean, he was there, and we did all that, and that was great. And of course, we, I'm tied up with the Electric Palace, which isn't far away from me, down in Harwich. And we, do, we did a couple of shows there for them. And, uh, and I've maintained their 35 mil projectors as well. Mm -hmm. And they, they run films, you know. How long have you been projecting here at uh, Blackpool? At uh, Blackpool? Well, I'm a fairly newcomer, really, aren't I? I think this is the third year I've actually run films on a Friday night, a feature, and an all-day Saturday. We, um, Jim and I, we, we share the work. We, he runs the 16 and I run the Super 8. And we, uh, we invite people to bring their own films short films that they consider would be interested to people to watch and this is what we do and we we spend all Saturday at about 10 o'clock we start don't we yeah. until about four o'clock in the afternoon we're running these films right the way through and there's always people there sitting there watching it and we it? don't stop no don't stop and there's some very interesting films wrong for not stopping <laughs> and some very interesting films come up that I've never seen before <clears throat> they're really yeah. good ones you know yeah mm. Normally, when I project my films, the other people watching are, are not into projecting, so that they wouldn't uh, spot mm. my errors uh, necessarily. How do you, are you ner nervous when you are projecting here tonight when all the room is full of uh, other projectionists that uh, have this as a hobby? No, no, no. not here. No. No, I am. <clears throat> I did a film show the other week in, uh, in a little country town called Halesworth at The Cut. It's a theatre and I had a full audience there. They invited me there for a Suffolk day because I live in East Anglia, so I'm part of Suffolk. So I had a Suffolk day and the f that was the first time that I had been in the whole time that I've shown films to audiences, so nervous. I'd never felt it before, I shook. Mm -hmm. Somebody said that was adrenaline was it? And, it, and it was afterwards. That was the drink, wasn't it? it, it I'd never had a drink. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, the, <coughs> so I did get nervous that one time, and that was just a few weeks ago. Yeah. That was bad. I'd never experienced it ever. But here we are <coughs> just among friends, I guess. So yeah. Different. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah. You are trying to do your best, though, when you're here at Blackpool, um, because there's so many eyes on you yeah. watching what you're doing all the time. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, like this morning, trying to set up in here, there's lots of bods came in yeah, to have yeah. a look to see what we're doing. They're all like interested <laughs> in the gear and they're trying to talk to Nigel a lot of the time about the engineering of it all, because he's quite knowledgeable on all the electrics and electronics. So they sort of want to know if they've got problems, they ask him about it, you see. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I felt this morning trying to set up was a little bit difficult with so many people in here. Yeah. I like doing it on my own, <coughs> setting up on my own mm. with a friend. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Just helping. So when you're running the films uh, on the Saturday uh, morning <coughs> and day, um, how do you put up the, the show list? Uh, how, how do you choose which title to show when? Uh, you have probably a Super 8 uh, projector and a 60mm. Is there a plan for how you show it? No, it's, pre it's pretty random really because we don't want to know what the films are about, do we? They, they bring a whole pile yeah. of stuff and they've got the titles on there and we just go through them. We feel we ought to show them. They take them decently to bring them along, so we show them. And yeah. I think it was the same with Jim. You get 
16 mil films, I mean, may recognize some of the titles and yeah. think, oh, I know this film, but some of them he may not, you know. Yeah, so we, yeah. we just try and work something. <laughs> some of them are very, very interesting, or what, you know, to buy them off the people at the finish, you know. Yeah. They're yeah. that good, and um, yeah. but they don't want to never sell. No, no. <clears throat> they got their favourites. I've got my favourites. We all have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, mainly um, I like to do this for uh, factual documentaries. I like that. Mm. Um, and some of the films that come to be shown here or anywhere where I go, <clears throat> you know, they've um, been produced by some top companies in the mm. past, yeah. like Shell and BP and Unilever. Mm. Um, and they, they did some lovely titles and the documentaries show life as it was in that particular time that that was made. They're brilliant. I like those. Yeah. Well, they're made to be shown, aren't they? They are. They're made to be shown and they were free to show as well on loan. Yeah. You could do it for free years back. I mean, it is a hobby of ours. A lot, yeah. now, a lot of people collect films and so on. But it's not a lot good really collecting all the film and having it stuck at home on your shelves and just running it for you. If you get a chance to run it for an audience, that's what it's all about, because yeah. you know, you're entertaining them, aren't you? You are. I mean, <clears throat> my history comes from uh, going to the cinema with my mother um, in the very uh, mid-50s. Um, and, um, and by 1962, I was showing 16 millimeter films at our local youth club. I mean, I, I got the, the education authorities used to drop off a film projector for you. Mm. And, um, and you could um, have a films out on loan, 16 millimeter films, yeah. on loan from Rank or whoever you're getting them from. Yeah. Um, and I used to show them at youth club level, there was no charge, there was no money involved in it at all. And that uh, spurred me on from, I used to do that in 1962. Wow. And here I still am doing the same thing. Yeah. And I still get excited about it, I tell yeah, you. It's, it's yeah, a bug. I really do, collecting, yeah. Once you get the bug for it, you know, you can't... I mean, Jim said earlier on that I'm interested in, right. in the engineering of this, but I am, and that, that's... I love work, all the projectors I've got with a big collection. I've overhauled all of them, including this one, and that one over there it was one of mine. Yeah. And uh, I get the thrill out of getting them working, as they used to be. You know, because it's no good having collector machines that don't work. You know, little point and put it on the shelf when it doesn't work. If you can't get the thing to work, but I, everything's got to work, and that's a great challenge. And I do a lot. I've done have a lot of repair for people over. I've lost track of how many machines I've worked on people, but um, I mean, it's a great thrill to get it all working. You know, that sounds good, and I'm looking forward to see you at work uh, the, tonight and tomorrow morning. So thank you for doing this. Thank you very much. Pleasure. It's uh, Friday evening and uh, I have just watched the feature A Night to Remember, that old Titanic film. It was the first time I've actually seen that movie, so about time I guess to, to watch that and I really enjoyed it. Very good copy. And it's something special watching that together with other collectors. In a cinema you will uh, have all sorts of people, but here you know you watch it with people that enjoy it being on actual films just like I do. So. That's something special and I really enjoy that. And uh, no, I will go to bed and be ready for tomorrow's breakfast where even more people will show up. And then later it's the film show on Saturday, which I look forward to. in the afternoon. Today's film show is over and I have brought my copy of Frog Ripa and Norwegian stop motion animation on a Super 8 400 to Kurt. Kurt is supposed to have this year's film show at the dinner and he wanted to show this in Norway famous movie when we are here in Blackpool uh, and I had the best copy of the Norwegian group so I had that and gave that to Kurt for him to 
splice that up together with Mark Norton for tonight's film show. They are busy rigging up for the dinner and uh, the tables are led. So I really look forward to the din uh, dinner tonight and I guess I will have to prepare a little bit ironing my shirt and put on my uh, new Duran tie that I got from Greg Perry. Yeah, this will be good. I look forward to that. It's an event where I think we feel enriched by the, uh, the number of overseas guests who uh, bring our enthusiasm and uh, participation to the weekend. So it's always fitting to uh, let you know who those distinguished guests are. And on table C, from Northern Ireland, we have Marvin and Eddie. Two, the actress who was nominated for seven Academy Awards and won the Best Actress in relation to um, 1942 film Mrs. Minotaur was Greer Garson. Three, the 1955 science fiction classic that features a journey to the planet Metaluna was This Island Earth. And regaining his Brain of Blackpool title after an interval of um, three or four years, I think, with 13, it's Eddie Goodwin. Fittingly, it's another green ticket, 133 three, at the top, 570193. Green, 133. European visitor to present the film show. So I will now hand over to Kurt. Everybody can hear me? Yes. Sounds good? Yep. Okie dokie, I'll make it short. The uh, presentation is going to be in three parts. And we talked about this last year. And uh, Adrian said, has there been, ever been any Norwegian Super 8 features released? And in fact, there has been six. Now, five of them are Norwegian folklore. And even though they're quite spectacular, they're all with Norwegian dialogues. It wouldn't make any sense of uh, showing them here. However, the sixth one is a cut down from the feature film that this guy made. It's a puppet movie, but uh, we'll leave that for now because that's going to be the third part of the show. And but we thought, we can't only show that, we have to show something else. And what can we show? That's typical Norwegian. So I thought, home movies, that's the thing. And I know what you're thinking, oh no, babies and Christmas parties, but I won't do that to you. So what we're going to see first here is a film I made. I think it was the summer of 1979. I went on an excur excursion with the Norwegian Railway Club. They went with a steam train <coughs> on the line that goes from Oslo to Stockholm. Well, we sort of stopped half along the way and took a side turn to a, a, a branch line that didn't, wasn't electrified, which would be much more perfect for a steam train. So let's do that one first, and then we'll get back to that the middle film. We gotta stop them because the first film is 24 frames a second and then the second one is 18 frames a second and then 24 frames a second as well. So, so we'll, we'll run the, the steam train film first and take it from there. Okay? It's uh, Sunday morning, I've had uh, breakfast, and uh, now I'm going down to uh, trying to be quite early in the queue for the film fair. And I have a suspicion who I might meet when I get down. <laughs> Let's see how that goes. Yeah. 
Well, what a surprise. Dominique and Del <laughs> first in line. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, the only question was, who would be first in line, Dominic or yeah. Del? Dominic. Yeah. He slept here. Don't tend that to I got here at half past four this morning and Dom was asleep on the chair. Do you believe him? <laughs> <laughs> There are, there are a few certainties in life. We will all die, and Del and Dominic will be first in line at battle. <laughs> <laughs> because he arrived, he arrived late. So. We are that sad. <laughs> uh, so I'm standing here with uh, Vince Wright, uh, and uh, how have, has it been today to be back to Blackpool? Brilliant. It's been you know, 30 odd years since I've last been. Um, selling the books is, is irrelevant, really. It's just been lovely to meet people again, at, like yourself, to actually meet people that I've only spoke to or done podcasts with. Uh, it's a family, isn't it? Here, it's still the same magic, and I've managed to sell a few books too. So yeah, good. everybody's happy. And uh, do you meet many of the same ones that you used to see in the old days when you worked at the round? Yes, uh, and, that's, and, we, and I've had a nice photo with you know, two members of staff, so there was three of us here who all worked together at one point. It would be lovely to see uh, even more. Perhaps we'll do a reunion one day. <laughs> yeah. Really nice to meet you, I must say, after interviewing yes, you the Yes, th thank so. you for, uh, for helping promote me and for taking books. And it's nice to know they're all over the world. Yeah, and uh, I feel I get more and more friends for each year I get back to Blackpool. And I, I hope to see you again here. Yes, I, I would imagine next year I'll be here just as a punter, not as a, a dealer. Yes, I should be here just uh, just having a look round. Good. Excellent. See you then. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this afternoon's Q&A session. If you were here last year and you saw the Q&A with former Duran Film Services director Jed Jones, I'm sure you enjoyed it. There was, uh, there was plenty of questions. We ran out of time before we covered quite a few things. And so I think Jed's very modest about this, but I, I can genuinely uh, confirm that part two is happening due to public demand. And so uh, thanks for coming to this one. I don't want to completely uh, skate over some of the historic details because you weren't all here last year and if you were here you might not remember everything anyway, but I will definitely make sure that we go into some entirely new territory and of course there will be time for you to ask questions. Going back in terms of uh, Jed's history with Duran, can you remind us of when you joined the company please? It was in... August 1975. I met Derek when I was working as a chef at the Talbot Hotel in Stourbridge and we became good friends solely because I'd sent for a Duran film hire catalogue and recognised his photograph in the catalogue. So when I saw him on the car park I went up and introduced myself and we just went on from there. Eventually about eight months later he didn't actually offer me a job. I suppose I actually, it's difficult. I know I was by the ice machine in the kitchen and talking to him. He says, well, you wouldn't want to work at Duran, would you? And well, that was it really. I started a, about a month later, gave my notice in and that was it. Now Dudley is uh, it's quite a large town in the West Midlands, isn't it? But um... It was a large town. It's a big second hand shop and pound shop. No, that's all there is Good. there. But am I right, Duran also had a, a shop in Stourbridge? No, we had a shop in Briley Hill, which was primarily a hire, um, eight mil and video hire, but it also had a small selection of um, electrical goods, you know, cameras and that sort of thing. And then probably about 18 months later, he opened a branch in Lower High Street in Stourbridge, which was similar, it had a big video library plus white and televisions and things like that. So we had three. And then of course we had the joint venture with Margaret Crook in St Albans. Oh no. 
now then. Oh, 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 oh let's go. <coughs> Milestones of Mickey. The Disney documentary <coughs> of Mickey Mouse cartoons. Um, look at the, just look at the box. It, that is really worth having for my book. <coughs> okay. It says here, I'm just going to say, 16mm Disney documentary of Mickey Mouse. Slight fade, for t but very good condition. Okay, okay. anybody got a tennis to start? Start at the tennis, £10 at the back, 11 here, I've got £11 here, any more on the 11? £12 here, was that 13 sir? No? £12 down here, 13 14 pounds over here, 14, 15, 15 there I got first. You want 16, 16 pounds bid so far, 16, 17 pounds over here, 17 over here, 18 pounds I've bid, 18 pounds anymore, 19 pounds at the back, 19 pounds, 20 pounds, 21 pounds, 21 pounds here. Gentlemen is de determined to have it, 21, 22 pounds, 22, he's still got his hand up, 23 pounds. 24 pounds, 25 sir, 25 pounds, 26 pounds, 27 pounds, 28, 29, 29. I've got 29 over here before you I'm afraid, 29 pounds bid over mm. here, 30 pounds, 30 pounds bid, 31 pounds bid, I've got 31 pounds bid on this lot, anybody else, 31, 32, 32 pounds, 32, 33 sir, what a gentleman, 33 pounds here, 33 pounds, any more offers, 33, 34 pounds, 34, 35, 50 pounds, I've got 50 pounds offered, well done for that man, 50 pounds, any more bids on 50 pounds, if not I'm going to be selling at 50 pounds, well done, sir. Thank you. All I'm going to say is Mickey would be proud of you all. <laughs>
couple of the chaps said to me over the conference that, you know, you'll, you'll enjoy this league. It looks like Super 8's going to be the last stand in home full format to watch new films. And it's true. Good. And thank you for spending your time here as a dealer uh, so everybody else like me can have a great time browsing through all the... It's nice to meet everybody from around the world that come. And uh, we always can communicate through film. People might speak different languages, but it, we're still watching the same film. And it's one of the marvellous things about moving pictures. Whereas we all speak different things, different languages, but we all watch the same thing. Very true. Thank you. My pleasure. It is Sunday evening and I have had a fantastic time here in Blackpool. I've talked with so many people during the weekend and for each year uh, I get to know them even better and get to know even more people as well. And I will not only take the new acquired films with me back to Norway, I will also take all those memories from this event. I am really looking forward to Blackpool in 2024. And with that, we have reached the end of this podcast. My name is Ivan Moik, and thanks for listening. <laughs>